Cool. Thank you so much. Uh, let's get started. Hi. Um, let me just get this up. I'm running. Okay. Awesome. So, hi. My name is Rasagya. I work in the Mapbox data team as a designer. And uh, one of the things that I've been focusing on has been to design OSM char. Uh, that's something that you might have heard across, uh, thrown around yesterday a bit. Um, and so that's something that I want to focus today. So let's quickly get started. So we're talking about OSM quality control. And it's, it's always important to first get the context of what OSM is today. So just quick numbers, 4 million members, 4,400 were active yesterday. Um, which meant that out of 52 million chain sets, 31,000 chain sets were made yesterday. So this means that OSM is, in, in a way, the biggest geospatial crowdsource project. And to have a project at the scale where there are so many changes being made each and every day, there is far more need to figure out how is the quality of changes. So to move forward, how do we ensure that there is always a high quality of data that is coming in from a crowdsource project like this? And this is not a new topic. Um, it's something that's been discussed over and over uh, for a couple of years uh, in the OSM community. And specifically, a bunch of folks from Mapbox have been talking and sharing how they've been doing a lot of validation, which is essentially looking at different chain sets and trying to figure out if something is a good chain set or a not a good chain set, uh, and different workflows, et cetera, that they've been doing. So, I don't want to repeat what they've been talking about, but if in case you're more interested in knowing how the data team works, uh, what we've been doing over the years, this, these are some of the other talks at SOTMs that some of my colleagues at Mapbox have been talking about. But being a designer, today I want to focus specifically on designing better tools for OSM quality control, uh, specifically talking about the learnings that I had while we were working on designing OSM char, which is the OSM chain set analyzer. Um, and so, Today, I want to focus on talking about patterns and contribution that we feel need validation, essentially things that we feel require another set of eyes from the OSM community so that we could be sure that the data is good. Then talk a bit more on what we redesigned in OSM SHA and then what's next. So let's get started. One of the most common sort of thing that you would expect a new user who's you know, new to the OSM community and the whole platform is this whole idea of, is this a private map or is this a public map? And that's something that tends to happen quite often. So here is an example where somebody mapped a building and added a name as, this is my home, or this is my school, etc. And this is a very simple sort of an error that somebody would make in the starting. And for changes like this, um, you would want to basically figure out how do we welcome new users to the community? And then how do we make sure that the first few edits are good? And if you can get them going well in the first few edits, there's a higher chance of them working well you know, in the next edits and onwards and onwards. Another common um, sort of error that might happen is around not knowing the exact tagging schema. Now, OSM is pretty complicated. There are tons of different ways um, that you could tag different objects. Uh, and there are, there's a wiki which is very exhaustive and really helpful, but not everyone who comes newly to the community is aware of everything, right? And in that case, you would have errors like this one where somebody ended up making 27 post offices, which aren't actually post offices, but they just couldn't figure out what amenity tax to add. So they just go, went ahead and added post offices and all of them, and then added name tags for like, oh, this is a grocery store, this is a supermarket, this is a gym, et cetera, right? And that's a common sort of error that somebody might make. I'm not sure, I know there is a data there, I'm not so sure which is the right tag, so I'm just going to go ahead and add some tags and see what comes out of it. And in cases like this, um, we need tools so that we can examine individual features, individual tags that have been changed in that feature or have been added, and figure out if that's a good change or not a good change. And then there are some very, very rare uh, intentional and harmful changes that are made on OSM. These could be either someone who's spamming or just doing something for fun, like graffiti, et cetera. And here's like a typical example of that, where somebody went on in their own building and added a bunch of pedestrian paths. And if you've been following the whole Pokemon Go frenzy, you know that they use OSM. And so some people thought that maybe we could just, you know, add stuff on OSM that we think is going to make more Pokemon spawn in my area. And this is another set of examples where you would find changes in the map which are really harmful. These are not actually to the ground truth. And in this case, it's it's really important to have a repository or a shared knowledge of what are these different harmful changes. So if 
different communities can pull together different types of changes and then we can all share that knowledge. That would be great to kind of build on to this sort of validation process. And here's another one. So, so specifically in this case, you would notice that this change is in the geometry. So you could detect this change by looking at the geometry in the chain set. Bunch of lines on top of each other, pretty high probability that that's just somebody messing it. Um, whereas here is another example where um, somebody decided to add, rename a role and say, Chicken Little was a good movie. Right? And in cases like this, somebody is not really making changes to the geometry, but he's, he or she is making changes to the metadata or the tag information. Right? And these are roughly the two major ways in which we can look at a chain set and try and analyze if the thing that somebody has done is good or not good. So I'm going to quickly talk a bit about how we at Mapbox Data Team used to validate. Um, we started using this tool called OSMchar, which was built by Willie Marcel in 2015. Uh, then Mapbox actively started supporting, running a global version, um, and improving the interface with collaboration with Willie. So it started off with a basic set of filters. You would see the search results as a list. You would see the details in a single page. And at the end of this year, um, some of us spent some time talking to the data team uh, at Mapbox um, and trying to get some internal feedback. One of the common things that people wanted to do was have a common or like a, a favorite set of filters. So I regularly go and check the same sort of stuff. Why can't I just save this so that I can come back again and again? Um, or can I get notifications for a specific set of changes that are being made in my area or in a specific area? Can I get more context on whether the discussions are actually happening? So you don't want to go ahead and look at a chain set and try and figure out if it's good or not, while somebody in the community has already replied back on it, asking the user, you know, why have you done this, et cetera. So adding more context, uh, giving more feedback to the automated flags. So one of the things that OSM Cha was doing was automatically using very simple rule-based um, detectors to flag chain sets. Now that might be correctly flag, that means that's actually a harmful chain set, or it might be incorrectly flag, in which case somebody made a possible import, which is flag, but that was a good import, right? In which case, you want to make sure that we train or like add a manual sort of feedback loop over here. Uh, and then other stuff like, can I track the status? Uh, can I track like actions that have been made on different chain sets? And in general, speed up the whole process. So what we also did, so in case you're not aware, Mapbox data team um, has been focusing heavily on improving OSM data quality, which means that they do this you know, throughout the whole day. But there are also community members that probably do this maybe over the weekend uh, or one off or maybe during community parties. So we chatted with a few community um, members as well. Some of them are actually over here, so it's nice to see them. Um, and they basically came up with some insights. Like most of the community members focus on their own local region. They work within small communities. They use mailing lists to discuss specific changes. Um, and they focus a lot on welcoming new users. So we wanted to figure out ways in which our tool could help support this sort of a validation process. So I'm just going to quickly skip through some of the sketches, et cetera. But this is essentially how we got started, brainstorming, thinking about what are the different ways. Should we show a map with all the chain sets uh, with bounding boxes and maybe visualize that? Should it be like a list? Should it be you click here and you click here and then the third view comes up? Stuff like that. So um, come talk to me if you're obsessed with this kind of stuff, because that's exactly what I love to do. But um, in, in overall, um, the whole workflow became very simple. You filter, so you look for a particular type of changes. You go through the list of chain sets, and you pick maybe the ones that you want to specifically evaluate, or if you're really up for it, evaluate all of them. In individual chain sets, you look at how they're visualized on a map, and then you give a thumbs up or a thumbs down, or you mention how severe the change was. So, so this is how the new OSM chart looks like. Uh, we've grouped the filters in so that people who are new to this tool could easily get started. So there's like some very basic filters, like, oh, from which date to which date was a chain set added? Um, which area or like which B box uh, was it added in? Um, were there any flags that were added? So in this case, um, if you can see, I have basically looking for new mappers. So any mapper that has less than five edits uh, till now, I want to see those chain sets. And that becomes easier for me to highlight. Um, there's also a very cool feature that was added this year by Brian uh, and the ID team on allowing users to request for feedback. So while you could do that when you're adding a new chain set on ID or an open state map, you could look at which folks have asked for a review or a you know, ask for feedback in OSM char. So that could be another sort of filter that you use. And there are, there are tons of 
uh, similar flags that we've been growing, uh, adding as OSM compared, which is another repository that we basically collect these rules into. Um, stuff like new mapper, we've figured out some Pokemon rules. So you know those rules has somebody modified a tag in a wrong way? Has somebody edited a feature that's pretty mature? Um, and so that might be like a flag. Um, or has someone review, requested review? So there are about I think more than 40 flags that we have right now, and it's an open system, so other folks can also contribute more and more flags, and the community can basically share knowledge of what could be there. Um, quickly moving forward, so there were other things that we basically heard and we wanted to add in. So one of the obvious things is to save the filter. So in this case, um, you can see that this, uh, the date is set as September. Um, I've set the B box as Boulder. Uh, and I'm basically looking at any change set that was flagged. So for any automatic uh, reason that I might think a chain set needs validation, I would want to look for all of them. And I can save them as this filter called Boulder. Uh, and that shows up in my user panel, and then I can share this with anybody else. So if I'm doing a community party in Boulder and I want everyone to get together and start validating chain sets, I just have to share a single link with everyone. They all get an OSM char uh, instance open, and then they can go through the chain sets together. Um, the other cool stuff here is that you have an RSS feed. So that basically means that instead of getting an RSS feed of every possible change in your area or across the world, you could look at specific type of changes that are being done and get notified as soon as that happens. And that's really great for folks who are really actively involved with their own community and want to make sure the changes are really good. So the next thing that we did was to redesign the, the interface a bit. So we had like the list of chain sets on the left. Um, and then when you click on it, it would show up on the right. But Essentially, we added a bit of information so that you could gauge whether this is a change so that you want to see. So sometimes there are names that are familiar in your local community. Oh, you know, this guy's been doing great changes. I don't need to bother looking at this, you know, changes. Or sometimes somebody might have a weird comment, which might put you off and make you wonder whether somebody's been doing something malicious. So things like that allow you to decide if you want to look at a change set. And then you can drill down into the whole view. So we spent a bit of time figuring out what's the ideal way to visualize changes, um, figure out how complex change sets like this could actually be seen in a way so that you could understand what actually happened here. Um, and some of the other things that I obsess over is to make sure that this interface is colorblind friendly, because um, that's also a very common sort of mistake that a lot of people tend to make with making like a red or a green, like the red light or the traffic light, which is not always easily directable. So this is some of the stuff uh, on visualization front that we worked on. And uh, then we made sure that you could click on each and every feature. So sometimes people tend to make huge chain sets where there would be over, so in this case, there are over 200 objects that have been added. How do you figure out which one do you want to see? Right? So one of the things that you want to do is the ability to move around, select different objects, and see what has been the change. In this case, somebody removed the natural wood tag and added a, a leisure park tag. Uh, and this might another, be another reason to try and get like Pokemon spawns. Um, and then there are other things that we wanted to look at. So can we basically allow a user to focus on different information related to the chain set at one time? So you could look at a user and see how many of those chain sets by that user have been flagged as good or bad by the community. You could specifically look at a particular feature that has been flagged by our detectors. You could also look at the ongoing discussions that have been happening on the chain set as well. And to move a bit more, the most important thing that I think we've added recently is to make sure that we have a feedback loop. So a detector de detects, you know, maybe decides that, oh, somebody basically made a possible import. Is it actually a possible import? Is it not? Is something that every human who's verifying it could give a thumbs up and thumbs down, but could also highlight whether this was a really critically you know, severe change that was made to the map, so it should be reverted or you know, fixed immediately, versus it could be a really low, small modification that somebody made, in which case, instead of going ahead and removing it, you would want the original mapper to himself or herself figure out what was the mistake and learn, which becomes a much more welcoming way for a community to grow. Um, and similarly, there are cases where you would want to directly report it to DWG and then later evaluate how many of these chain sets were sent to DWG, what eventually came out of it. Um, and also, like this data becomes really useful for anyone else later to figure out how to improve these detectors and also to do something more interesting in machine learning space. So this becomes like a great human-generated test data. 
And uh, the last thing that I want to really focus on is the fact that designing tools is very easy if you sit in your own room and you think you are the best guy who could do this and solve the whole world's problems. But that's never the case. So one thing that we realize is that a lot of folks in the data team love different set of tools that have been built by the OSM community. And it just doesn't make sense to try and replace them by building something from scratch all the way again. So we wanted to make sure that our tool allows someone to move across different community tools uh, based on different levels of um, sort of evaluation that you're doing. So if you're at a chain set level, apart from looking at the chain set in JOSM or in ID, you could also look at it in Achavi, which is also another great way to visualize your chain sets, um, and also look at it in other tools like OSM HV or in level zero. Uh, you might also want to look at a specific user and figure out, is this user a power user? Has, this, has he been mapping for over a decade? Or has this person been just started recently mapping, and where have they been mapping, right? So things like that come uh, with this great tool called HDYC, which also is very easy to just open through OSMchar. And if you select a particular, f a particular feature, you could also look at the history of the feature over time. So there's another tool called Deep History. So if you can see, these are all the buttons that allow you to basically leverage on the great sort of ecosystem of other validation tools and chain set visualization tools that exist in the community so that we don't have to recreate. So if you're interested, these are the list of things that we have. Uh, we keep getting more requests to add many more things, and that's something that we're totally up for adding. So if, if you have like a tool that's interesting, or if you think that there's a tool that you love to use and you would want it to be part of the workflow, feel free to cut an issue in the repository, and we would, be love, and we would love to add that as well. Um, and in case you're wondering, uh, if, if you can see this chain set, it might seem familiar. This is actually this particular place, which is, edited very recently to add this particular building. So stuff like this is very easy to spot if you just look at oh, all the changes in this area near my University of Colorado. And you can very quickly find this change that was added. Uh, and this was tagged as a primary tag added to a mature feature, which is also interesting. So the fact that this Folsom field is a really mature and an old, well-mapped area. Um, and if somebody tries to modify that, you would want to get alert. So in this case, a good change. No, no malicious intent, but it's great to see this being like another example of what could happen with OSM char. And I just want to wrap this up with uh, a bit of internal feedback that we received. So the overall feedback was pretty positive. Folks became much more efficient. They started distributing validation tasks. So if there are about 10 folks who are sitting throughout a day trying to validate you know, the whole world, instead of trying to be completely lost, you could pick different detectors, split it up amongst yourself, and then do this. Um, you could also keep track of severity, which is super important. So if one person finds that there's a chain that's really harmful to OSM, he could just flag it. And someone else could just be keeping an eye out on really critical changes. right? And that becomes very easy for cross-team collaboration uh, in like doing this validation process together. Uh, we also got some really great um, external feedback. Uh, we've had some good sort of users coming in from different countries, apart from India and Peru, obviously, because those are the Mapbox Reader team members. So it's been, it's been great to see a lot of folks from US, uh, Brazil, Germany, UK, Russia, using OSM Cha. Um, if you've also heard yesterday, there have been different folks from different companies who are also trying to use the tool, like Facebook, um, Hot, uh, Tasking Manager, et cetera. So it's been pretty great to see the feedback that's there. But while that's, that's really overwhelmingly positive, Validation is still not a solved problem. Um, and one of the major things that we're trying to figure out is how do we scale these efforts? I mean, if you have 30,000 chain sets being added every day, you can't have someone possibly look through all of them. And if that is the case, maybe it has to be distributed amongst like more people or more community. Um, how can we specifically find the chain sets that we are really interested in, which are really critical, which might be really harmful? Um, and what can we learn from these chain set reviews? And this is something that, uh, some of us at Mapbox have been trying to do, but we would love to have like more folks who are into machine learning, uh, doing much more analysis on chain sets to come use this data. So the whole OSM char API is open. You could basically look through everything that has been manually tagged by all the verifying folks uh, and know what, you know what was the data set about. And so I want to end by saying that the only way forward that I see um, is that we engage the OSM community to not just map, which is great, but to also validate the changes that are happening in the community. And I think that would be the right way to move forward in this direction. So with that, thank you so much. Um, before, I mean, we could take some questions. Yeah, thank you.